In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning and welcome to our Easter Sunday service. Thank you for tuning in. Said it's still not possible to celebrate here at St. John's, but we want to use the possibilities we have to gather around our breakfast tables, around our TVs or screens with our family members to celebrate together the good news of the resurrection. It is a news, a good news that speaks to us, especially in these difficult times of the pandemic we go through. It is the good news of hope coming, a hope that we will not remain and stay in difficult times, but that there will be healing, that there will be, uh, that Easter Sunday is coming and lies ahead of us. So in, like this, I invite you that we celebrate together and we will do that in two parts. For those who know our church here at St. John's, who uh, are, is, are missing to come here, to be here at this place and to celebrate in the traditional known way, I invite you that we have um, a reading and a prayer here from the altar, the liturgy, how we call it. And for those of you who uh, tuned in after a long time or ever, first time ever to celebrate uh, an Easter because you um, discovered by chance our, our short film, either join in into the liturgy, the prayers, or just skip to our sermon where we hear the good news of Easter uh, preached to us. So we celebrate together and right at the beginning we pray with a psalm, Psalm 118. And I use for this the message to read you this passage. God's my strength, he's also my song, and now he's my salvation. Hear the shout, hear the triumph songs in the camp of the saved. Because the hand of God has turned the tide. The hand of God is raised in victory. And the hand of God has turned the tide. I didn't die, I lived. And now I'm telling the world that God did. God tested me, he pushed me hard, but he didn't hand me over to death. Swing wide the city gates, the righteous gates. I walk right through and thank God. This temple gate belongs to God, so the victors can enter and praise. Thank you for responding to me. You've truly become my salvation. The stone the mason discarded as flawed is now the capstone. This is God's word. Here up our eyes. And we can hardly believe it. This is the very day God acted. Let's celebrate and be festive. Glory be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's reading is out of John chapter 19, verses 16 to 30. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took charge of Jesus. He went out carrying his cross and came to the place of the skull, as it is called. In Hebrew it is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. And they also crucified two other men, one on each side, with Jesus in between them. Pilate wrote a notice and had it put on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, is what he wrote. Many of the people read it because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city. 
The notice was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written stays written. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier. They also took the rope, which was made of one piece of woven cloth without any seams in it. The soldiers said to one another, let's not tear it. Let's throw dice to see who will get it. This happened in order to make the scripture come true. They divided my clothes among themselves and gambled for my robe. And this is what the soldiers did. Standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there. So he said to, this, to his mother, He is your son. Then he said to the disciple, She is your mother. From that time, the disciple took her to live in his home. Jesus knew that by now everything had been completed. And in order to make the scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl was there full of cheap wine, so a sponge was soaked in the wine, put on, the, put on a stalk of hyssop, and lifted up to his lips. Jesus drank, drank the wine and said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. So far God's word. Today, for Easter Sunday, I'm reading from the Gospel of Mark in chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of God. Amen.
I invite you that we pray. Father, I pray today you would do a deep healing work in many hearts. I know, God, there are so many that walk away from you when life doesn't end up the way they think it should. When their lives doesn't make sense, when you, Lord, doesn't make sense. When we have the feeling it will be forever a dark time, forever Good Friday and Saturday. And I pray, God, today that by the grace of your Holy Spirit, you would deepen our faith in you, not in what we want to happen, but in what you guide us through. You, God, bring people back to trust in you. Like you brought back Peter from despair, Mary from sadness, John from sorrow. Bring us back, Lord. Bring us back to life, to hope, to joy, to love. Bring us back like you brought back your son on that glorious morning, on Easter morning. God, I pray today for those who, with hands lifted at you around our country and our world, those who pray for healing and hope that you change their circumstances. I pray for miracles in the lives of those who work against the coronavirus, who work for other people, for the economy of our countries. I pray God today for faith, not just in our plans, but in your purpose. God, I thank you that you're a God that works in all things. Even when we don't see it, years later we can look back and say, yes, I see how God used it, how he worked in it. We praise you, Lord, Almighty God. You are the beginning and the end. You are our life, our hope and peace. We praise you this Sunday morning for raising Jesus Christ from the dead and raising us to a new life filled with hope and joy. So we pray as you told us to do. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Happy Easter! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! We celebrate this morning Easter, the most wonderful day of all. But when we do so, this year we have to do it inside. That's right, you are not allowed to leave your house, to go out, you have to stay inside. By the way, my neighbor always does this. No, please go inside. No, you are not allowed to go. No, we have to stay inside. No, you put us all into danger if you do that. I will call the police. And they never listen. Yeah, that's what we heard all day, all week long. All week long, the police told us we have to stay inside. It's not a holiday weekend but we know that we know what we have to do uh, to keep everyone safe to keep our distance with our common sense what uh, what's the right thing to do one thing though cannot stay inside cannot be locked down or isolated and that's the good news of the gospel Jesus cannot be locked down he cannot be locked down even into death, nor into our expectations or uh, vision about how the world is. He 
always comes forth and changes it. You see, Easter morning is just like that. First, everything seems like a nightmare. The women go to the tomb, the stone is rolled away, the body is not there anymore, then. but that changes. It changes into happiness, into hope. Hope comes forth on this day. First for the woman and then for the disciples. Peter, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, all change. Jesus cannot be locked down. The good news of Easter, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, will go outside into our world this Easter season too. Happy Easter, Christ is risen, He is risen indeed, and we celebrate this good news of um, uh, Holy Easter Sunday, even if we can't be outside. Who says we can't be? Look, we are here in our garden, and um, we celebrate together in the way we can gather around the table with an Easter Sunday breakfast, and I invite you that you join me, make it comfortable at your home, and let's celebrate together Easter. Let's think about the Easter story. What is there to be celebrated? See, there are these three days that uh, the Gospels describe in a very detailed way. It's Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And in the middle of them, there is Jesus, his story of redemption, of bringing hope and peace. When we celebrate Easter, 
Sunday, then we only can celebrate this day if we think about the other two. In a sermon o- from John Orberg, which I remember really well, um, there is he describes the structure of these three days, and um, I kept kept this this picture in my mind, and I think it speaks very well about how we experience um, these weeks, and this, perhaps this time of pandemic in general. Um, he says. Good Friday is a day like so many others from our life, a day where we uh, experience the same. On Good Friday, Jesus dies on the cross in Jerusalem. He is crucified, a terrible death. And he goes this path, his way to the cross, because um, he brings with it redemption. You know, all sin, all suffering, all brokenness of our world is brought through this cross. Jesus brings peace through this cross with the Father. All sins are forgiven through Him. Everything we have done or omitted to do, it's past. Jesus takes away the sin of the world says the Bible, through his death on the cross. That's Good Friday. Good Friday stands for so many different days in our life. It's the day when your biggest and best dream died. The day when you received a call from your doctor with a terrifying news and you know there will be a very difficult time lying ahead. Good Friday is the day when a good friend of yours has a car accident and is in hospital and you don't know what will happen. Good Friday is the day where a family member passed away. Good Friday was for those who were with Jesus such a difficult day. It was a day of big disappointment. They couldn't believe that Jesus really died there. All their hope that he is the Messiah who will free Israel of the Romans were shattered. All their hopes put into him just gone. And then there is Easter Sunday. Is the Sunday the best day of all? Is the Sunday is the day of hope and joy and celebration? And there is this day in between. It's very interesting. The Bible doesn't speak or say anything about this this day in between, this Saturday in between Friday and Sunday. But this is also symbolic for so many experiences and times of our life, the time in between. You know, when after something terrible happened, the next day and weeks and months we go through and we realize nothing will will change in this situation. Will it always be like this? We pray and our prayer doesn't seem to help. It's this time in between. It seems like God is silent in this time. It seems like nothing is happening. Nothing will change ever. I imagine Mother of Jesus, the disciples gathering on this Saturday, coming together. I'm sure they were talking with each other and asking, um, did we do something wrong? Was it my fault? I'm sure they, they perhaps trying to find someone who's guilty for, the, for what happened. What do they do? They weep, they cry together, they pray together. What do they do on days like this? I think we can do three things just to keep the structure of three days. Three things we can do on, on such a, in such a period. First, we can give up. 
we can say it will always be like this our life is over there's nothing that will change it and it won't be better or secondly we say it's not that bad as it seems like and third third i think we can very well wait and for the bible uh, time of waiting is an important time waiting means uh, preparing in some way waiting means nothing passive but something very active we wait with god we meet with others we pray together and there is no other day you can be god closer than on such a saturday waiting that he changes something in your in our circumstances maybe this whole period we go through together this time of pandemic is such a period is is the day in between the time in between our life how it was before and how it hopefully will be after and it can be a time of reflection and surely celebrating today the easter can be a time of joy and celebration a time where where we celebrate together the good news that Christ is risen, that he cannot be locked down or locked in. Jesus always breaks out. And the good news of the gospel, it breaks into our hearts and, and brings joy where we feel uh, that we struggle. That, that's the good news of Easter. Uh, it's a celebration of hope and new life. A celebration of hope and new life and I wish you this experience perhaps today or in the coming weeks that you find your hope and it's important to do because if you do then you you will help others to uh, keep going you will lift them up you will bring new life to them that's what we celebrate Christ is risen he is risen indeed and happy Easter.
So we receive the Lord's blessing. May the Almighty God, may He bless you and keep you now and forever. May the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Happy Easter. Wishing everybody a happy Easter 2020 because he has risen. He has risen indeed. Welcome to my colorful lounge room and Easter project this year in times of self-isolation. So I thought I'd share what I'm, uh, what I'm up to. Uh, I have collected over the years, as you can see, a plethora of materials and I've already started to putting them into some greeting cards as you can see on the lounge room table here. Second hand greeting cards from friends. They know that I'm doing this kind of stuff. I hope you're inspired. I wish you a peaceful, spirit-filled um, Easter. Lots of love from Heike. This is the 2020. I can't celebrate unless I have lots of hot cross buns and we're having a fillet of beef and I can't celebrate or do without my phone so that I can keep in touch with my family and friends. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I celebrate Easter 2020 with the family tradition of roast duck and dumplings sitting around the table enjoying each other's company. And I celebrate Easter 2020 with Joseph and his parents Nicola and Paul here at our home in Glen Waverley with the delicious food that Karen just described. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Frohe Ostern 2020 von der Waluga-Familie.